basically how his most recent surgery went. So this is surgery during COVID. Um, so how that went is they have pre-op appointments the whole day before um, where they do like, I think they ran labs and they do, they did a COVID test. <clears throat> they do an echo because they want to make sure they have the most recent up-to-date information um, of what his heart looks like and his physiology is like the day before surgery when we got there. I feel like we got there around like 7 a.m. the day before and we finished around noon and we left what we thought we had finished and they called us when we were almost home and they were like, um, you guys, we didn't do our COVID test. Can you please come back? So we had to bring Wynn back, poor kid. Um, he has had quite a few COVID tests. He'll scream for a second and then as soon as they're done, he's forgets all about it. So, um, so we did all that the day before and then we go back home because it's just like clinic appointments. Um, and then the day of surgery, we got to the hospital at about 6 a.m. I want to say. And we're just like waiting there in his little pre-op room. And they give you like an electronic buzzer, right? It's, it's just like a pager and it'll like light up and <laughs> vibrate. The only difference between the restaurant buzzers and this one is like, Restaurant buzzers usually don't have a digital readout on them, whereas this one does. And it would say, like, Wynn is on bypass, he is doing well. Stuff like that. Like, short, succinct little messages like that. It's just a long-ass day, and you just... It's a lot of... A lot of worry, a lot of praying, a lot of, like, hoping that nothing's going to go wrong and no complications will arise. That's what makes it a long day, especially considering during his first surgery, they had to do CPR for, I think they said like two or three minutes. And so knowing that from his first surgery, going into the second surgery was really hard. It was harder, but somehow easier as well. It was easier because we kind of knew what to expect and we knew that we knew it was going to be a long day and we knew our way around the hospital. Um, if you want my like pro tip for being in the hospital, I know it's hard and scary and stressful. And like, sometimes you don't want any nurses or doctors to talk to you at all. You just want to like sit there and absorb everything, but it's nobody's fault that you're there. And that you're in this situation. It sucks, yeah, but it's nobody's fault and nobody deserves punishment for the way that you're feeling. They're just, everyone's just doing their job and they're doing it as best they can and they always try and keep our feelings in consideration. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the same for them. And I just have this feeling, I mean, I could be completely wrong too. I mean, I don't work in the healthcare setting, so I don't know, but I have this feeling that a lot of people are not very appreciative of or not expressive of that appreciation and it's I just think it's so important anyone in healthcare your job is so important and we're so thankful for you I just can't say it enough I mean if people didn't care enough to study the human body and and healthcare and and want to be in that field my son wouldn't be here he'd be he'd be gone Surgery days are stressful. Surgery day during COVID was extra difficult. The way American Family Children's Hospital is set up is there is, there's like a whole floor dedicated to surgery. You go to that floor, you check in, they have this big waiting room with like couches and rocking chairs and like comfortable recliners and stuff um, and a nice coffee maker and a bathroom and like, it's nice. Um, and then they have like a TV where they display their operation like room will be and then you watch that number so like if say he's in the operating room like number 65 so you'll watch number 65 all day and then they have like a color-coded system so it's like green was like in um in post-op coming off anesthesia or whatever um so that's kind of nice but 
we didn't get to experience that just because of COVID. I don't want people sitting in the waiting room during surgeries. So instead we were sitting in that pre-op room. They took the bed out. There was no like rocking chair in there. There were two folding chairs that me and Stefan sat on and it was like 10 hours. <laughs> it was it, like to be stressed and worried and exhausted because you woke up really early. And like for me, I didn't sleep the night before. And I was thinking that we were going to have one of those like reclining rocking chairs in there. And I was like, I was like, okay, if I stay up all night and like do laundry and clean the house and whatever, you know, then when we go in for, when he goes back for surgery and I'm just thinking, yeah, I'll just, I'll sleep. And then the day will go by faster because I'll be asleep. It'll be fine. And then they told us we couldn't sit in like the waiting room and all like the cafeteria and everything was closed. That's one thing I would recommend. If your kid's going to be inpatient for any amount of time, go ahead and bring yourself a cooler and stock it full of stuff you actually enjoy eating because hospital food, you never know. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. So that was our day. Folding chairs. Yep, two, just me and my husband sitting on folding chairs against the wall. Try and relax, but then if you sat that way for like more than 15 minutes, your ass would go numb. So it was like, we'd like sit on the floor and like try and lay down on the floor, but it's like a, it's like tile over cement. So it's not really, it's not really a comfortable sleeping surface. And it was like our, yeah, it was just a, <clears throat> it was a long day. They took him back at about, I think, like 7 or so, 7.30 maybe. Um, they sent us updates throughout the day. I want to say at like 4.30, they were like, okay, he's done. We're getting him. We're going to be taking him to his room in the PICU. I think it was like 5.30 um, that they brought us upstairs. So they had us wait in this conference room because the surgical team was going to like come and give us give us like the rundown of how everything went um and they were getting Wynn settled into his room um our primary nurse um her name is Jody and she is like she's like a family member now <laughs> she has like two primary nurses right so the daytime shift it's Jody and the nighttime shift it's Megan and anytime what that means really is if they are working and he's in the hospital or in the unit, they're supposed to be assigned to him. It doesn't always happen that way because I'm sure they have to maybe alternate or things like that. At 5.30, they took us to that room. And then around like, I think like 5.30 or 6, Jody came in. I think she said that they had already brought Wynn up and she's trying to get him settled and get his lines straightened out and all that. I feel like we didn't get to his room until like almost 8 o'clock. Because I remember we were still in the conference room and like Jody came back to check in on us and the daytime shift is seven to seven. So, and it was like seven forty-five, and I remember we were like, why are you still here? Go home. Like wh whoever is here tonight, we know they'll take good care of him. Like, she's like, I know. I just, she's like, I just like to work with him kind of thing. So, but I feel like we didn't get to his actual room. I feel like it must've been close to like eight thirty or nine. That we actually got to his room got to go see him like what you can prepare yourself for i guess if you're going into this for the first time your kid will be intubated which is that i think for me was always the hardest thing because if they cry or scream it doesn't make any sound and it is like seeing anguish on your child's face and not even being able to hear them is really difficult it will, it'll, it like haunts you. We'll usually have IVs like in a few places. I think Wynn had something in each arm and then he had a line in his leg as well. He had his bandage here. Um, they'll have chest tubes, which are just these tubes that get stitched into like their chest cavity and then they drain out and like when they first bring them back post-op they they have these like big box things that that like measure it and keep track of how much fluid is coming off of them 
but once it goes down enough they can switch it out to like a little it kind of looks like you know those rubber like booger sucker things those bulbs it kind of looks like that but it's clear and then once they get less and less fluid like they can start removing those tubes but it usually takes a few days so that's kind of what it looked like and I can put a picture of what his bed looked like after that there's a lot of like different meds and stuff on his pole at that time as well so and they usually keep him sedated for I think like at least 24 hours I want to say and that's pretty much how that day went by the time by the time Stefan and I like got into Wynn's room to see him I think it was like 9 p.m. so we had been up since like 5 well, I was up the whole night before we finally got dinner at about 9 30 and then at like 10 15 Stefan went home to take care of the dogs and with the COVID restrictions they had special rules about visitors so like normally what we'd done in the past was when Stefan and I went to work my parents who watch when during the week anyways um you know, they'd go to the hospital and spend the day with him until we got off work. With the COVID restrictions, the rules for visitors were you couldn't have more than two people in a 24 hour period. So that means if my, say my mom went to sit at the hospital with Wynn during the day, then only one of us would be able to come there that night. And we would have to like alternate days that we could spend time with Wynn. If we were to do that, if there was like a third person coming in, we'd have to alternate. Um, it would have been too hard, I think. So I ended up leaving my job because we didn't know how long he'd be inpatient. You know, the last time they thought maybe a month or two, and then it ended up being like three months. So I didn't want to ask for time off from my company. I don't know. It was just too much. It was a lot for me. Um, and I was having a difficult time at that job anyways, just because it was a lot more responsibility than I think I could handle at that point in my life. There's no reason for you to have to quit your job, by the way. Um, I was a property manager and the company I was working for had like a property cell phone. Like, I love feeling needed and important, but at this stage in my life my family needs me more so I think that's it I'm gonna try to put on some some like pictures and stuff from his most recent surgery day which was back in September um, just so you guys can kind of see what it's like and anyway so let me know in the comments if there's questions that you have about surgery day or what what it's like that maybe I can answer in a future video or I can respond in the comments if there's anything you would like to learn about in a future video because I'm always open to ideas I have a hard time coming up with ideas half the time for these these vlog type videos um, I'm, I don't feel like I'm very good at them because I feel like I ramble a lot <laughs> so if you have any ideas or suggestions please let me know please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching bye